Welcome to Muslim Apologetics Australia. In this video, we're going to investigate Majid Nawaz's beliefs uh, concerning whether he is a true Muslim or he's not a Muslim. Uh, and it's not just coming from me. You can go to any skeptics out there. Uh, you can look at atheist forums. You can look at other ex-Muslim forums. And there are people who are questioning whether he's actually genuinely Muslim or his what we call a a a closet uh, atheist, um, ex-Muslim apostate. Uh, I believe personally he's an apostate and he's an ex-Muslim, and he's only trying to pretend to be a Muslim, uh, so to try and destroy Islam from within. And this isn't something new. Many, many people in the past have done things like this. Many prominent people. People like Atatürk, for example. Uh, so what they'll do is, so they can win public opinion, so they can reach uh, a particular high-end office. They basically present themselves to be Muslim, uh, to win the Muslim votes. So then he can slowly change it within. And we know that Atatürk started changing Islam. He started changing the Adhan from being Arabic into uh, Turkish. He um, closed down a lot of the religious organizations. Uh, he implemented a lot of Western values and he started changing this over time. But see, if Atatürk came out and said, I'm a kafir at the start, would anyone accept him in the Muslim circles? No, they won't accept him. But you know, Muslims are beginning to understand Majid Nawaz and they're rejecting him. Uh, and so he doesn't really have much to stand on. So now um, what he's doing is Majid Nawaz is starting to uh, conceal his apostasy. Um, and so that's what we're going to show in this. So let's first see what Majid Nawaz has to say about his self. Yet I also stand here before you as a Muslim. I stand here as well before you as a secularist. I stand here before you as a liberal and I stand here before you as a Democrat. In fact, I stood as a liberal Democrat. Okay, so you can see clearly he's saying that he's a Muslim. And you can see him here talking to Bill Maher about that he knows about Islam. Have a listen to this. It's just insane. Again, you have almost unique credibility on this issue. Well, the funny thing is, Bill, I, I've memorized half of the Quran. I'm a Muslim. Mm -hmm. I'm born and raised a Muslim, uh, to a Muslim family. I learned classical Arabic. <laughs> I spent time in prison uh, as a political prisoner fighting for... Okay, so notice how he's trying to take credit. Bill Mahas asks him, you know, you are the man to have the credibility to speak on behalf of Islam. And so Majid Nawaz says, I've learned half of the Quran. Uh, he's memorized it. Now, here is the thing. He claims he's a Muslim and he memorized half the Quran. He can speak on behalf of Islam. This is the Majid he's presenting to his audience. And I found a video about six years ago, six years ago, and where Majid Nawaz clearly shows his apostasy that he's an ex-Muslim. Uh, and here it is. I actually posted a comment. You can see it under the Quilliam Foundation video. Can you see here? There's a video called Do British Muslims Have a Problem with Apostates? Big question. This was posted by Quilliam International, Majid Nawaz's web, um, website, his organization. And about six years ago, I found a video which shows, and I put a comment. I actually posted this comment under this video. And so in this video, you can see the link here, Mustafa Shahin, six years ago, exposing Majid Nawaz, the fake Muslim, watch from 32 minutes onwards. And I put a link here. Now, when you go to the link, it doesn't open up. Can you see? It says this video is unavailable. So it seems to me that they've removed the video. 
okay so the video has been removed now in this video if they didn't remove it what you would have seen and I've even put the minute forms can you see where it says minutes so it says uh, in this video at the 32nd minute he actually claims you can be an atheist and a Muslim at the same time he says that praying and fasting is optional so it's only optional to pray and fast he actually said, and I've put it all in point forms in this video that they've deleted and removed, heaven and afterlife is only metaphorical. He even said Islam is not better than Christianity. He also said all religions lead to the same pathway. He says no religion has the monopoly of truth. He also said Sharia law only to be studied as history, not to be implemented in today's world. Well, he says that now anyway. He says we use human rights to interpret the Quran. Uh, he also said he's skeptical if the afterlife exists. He claims he does not denounce Allah and the Prophet, that which is a, a contradiction in that video. He entertains the idea to critic both Allah and the Prophet. And so when you go to the link, they've removed the video. And it goes to show why are they hiding um, his real beliefs. And by the way, I've researched, I've still investigated, and I went through it probably a hundred different videos a hundred and the video is not there they've literally removed it from all social media networks whether it's youtube facebook twitter wherever it is they've removed the video and this is what we're saying why are you removing i mean if you want to be honest with the muslim community just come out and say it you know say don't say you're a muslim be honest with yourself and say I don't believe in these things. Now, the interesting thing is we've actually found some evidences where he can't hide it, right? Uh, we can go here where he actually declares some of those same things of, a, of his apostasy. Let's have a look. In this video, uh, Majid Nawaz is describing how he... Um, for protection, he carries a knife, but not on him personally, but by his bedside. And listen to the words of kufur that ca comes out of his mouth. Have a listen. But uh, I'm not a violent person. Um, so the reason I carry it around with me still is because I... I well, you have it by your bedside. You yeah, sorry, sorry. You haven't got it strapped behind no, your back right now. Yeah. It's in my drawer. In case so, the questions <laughs> get too difficult. Sorry. So, <laughs> <laughs> it's in my drawer next to my bed um, mm. in the desk, in the writing desk. And the reason it's still there is because I developed a perverse bond with this thing. Um, I bought it on a school trip to the Lake District and I bought it for protection. But I developed this perverse dependence on it is before I was in any way religious at all so I as I've said in radical I ended up relying more on this thing than even God because it was my it was the thing that was going to save me and I suppose if anyone's got so, I so did you hear that he claims he's a Muslim but he believes he puts more trust in the knife than Allah you know if this isn't kufur I don't know what is I can point you, point you to even the theology. And by the way, you know, I will... Okay, so listen here where he actually says he doesn't even pray. Have a listen. Speak a bit about some of the terms in the Quran, but I want to make something absolutely clear so nobody's in any doubt. I am not a devout Muslim. I don't pray every day five times a day. I used to. But just to make it clear here, I'm not speaking as a religious leader nor a religious role model. I'm speaking as somebody with an obvious interest in the... Okay, now notice he says he doesn't even pray every day. Uh, so he's left, he abandons the five times Salah. So there you go, that's clear kufur there. Um, and uh, interesting, notice he says he's not a role model for Islam. 
Uh, he actually started saying that he is not like a religious figure or a role model. This was after he was caught at a strip club. So, as you know, tapes were released where he was visiting strip clubs. Uh, you know, and uh, he before that he was declaring to everyone how you know Muslims should look up to him. He's a role model for Islam. You know, he was promoting himself to be religious. And but after he got caught at that strip club, he came out and started saying Muslims shouldn't look at me as a you know a religious figure, and I'm not really religious, and blah blah blah. So he wasn't saying that wasn't his sentiment before the strip club episode which actually exposed him so you know things like that didn't happen if his dirty closet wasn't exposed the guy would have kept pretending how you know he still prays five times a day he still reads the quran he still fasts and all that sort of stuff but that's what i'm saying allah exposes them and once their dirty laundry is out in the public and they can't hide it anymore then they start coming out and, uh, you know, being open about it. Otherwise, it's just secrecy and trying to trick you in believing that he's, he's religious and, you know, what he's saying about the Qur'an must be true. He can't, he can't sell that narrative anymore. And that's why most of the Muslims have, have denounced him. They've seen who he is, for what he is. That's why his organization is a failure now. <clears throat> And that's the reason why he's now working with the ex-Muslims, you know, uh, and that's why he works with, you know, Sam Harris, um, Ayan Ali Hirsi. He's even gone in bed with people like Tommy Robinson in the ADL. I mean, if you're starting to shake hands with those guys now, um, I mean, that's what happens. That's what happens when you get exposed. Your 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 face mask drops, and now you have to. Openly, I mean, secretly, he was probably already in bed with those guys, right? But now that he's been exposed and the Muslim community have turned their back on him, now he's open and transparent to say, look, I'm holding the ex-Muslim's hands, Ayan Ali Hirsi's hand, EDL's hand, Sam Harris's hand, Bill Maher's hand. These are all anti-Islamists. So what does that say about him? You know, next... Uh, He's probably even going to make a, a video discussion uh, with uh, Tawhidi, Imam Tawhidi. I'm actually waiting for that interview to come out where he sits with Imam Tawhidi, if it's not even out there already. Now, remember what I said, and this is the bombshell evidence, okay? Remember what I said to you about um, how the first video link uh, that clearly declared his apostasy... Uh, notice the Quilliam Foundation removed that video. Uh, and in that video, remember I said how he says heaven and hell are metaphorical, um, you know, and, you know, he's denying the existence of Allah and things like this, you know, even. Um, so listen to this video at the end of the video, where Majid Nawaz is speaking to ex-Muslims, listen what he says at at the end. Context. I appreciate that. Okay, I think that we we agree on more things than we than we disagree on. Like I I disagree with you that some thing in the sky spoke to his angel and sent his angel to some guy in a cave. I disagree with you on that in that regard. But I agree with you. That's assuming I believe in that. Well, I, I assume I am making an assumption. I so yeah. I disagree with. I don't. I'm an atheist, right? So I don't think that there that that I don't think that there was a god that wrote Supernatural. this. Supernatural. Yeah, this stuff. Yeah. yeah. There might. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. I don't know what the truth yeah. is, but I know for a fact that he didn't write a book. Okay. Did you see that? He said, "Who says that? I believe in that." Let's go back. Listen again. Listen. Like, I, I disagree with you that some thing in the sky spoke to his angel and sent his angel to some guy in a cave. I disagree with you on that. Yeah, she says, I disagree with you in the revelation coming down and the angel bringing it down and, and to the cave and things like that. And listen to Majid Nawaz's response. 
in that regard. But I agree with you. That's assuming I believe in that. He says, what's to assume that I believe in that? (laughs) So he's actually in doubt, even in believing in the revelation. He got caught out here. He literally uttered this. So thank you, Majid Nawaz. Thank you again for exposing yourself. This time, we've got this recorded now. You know, even if you want to delete this video talking to ex-Muslims, that's it. We've got it on file now. So um, you can't delete this one and get away with it. Spoke to his angel and sent his angel to some guy in a cave. I disagree with you on that in that regard, but I agree with you. That's as assuming all I believe in that. Well, I, I just- <laughs> Okay, so there you have it, folks. Majid Nawaz is an apostate, clearly an ex-Muslim, doubts whether Allah sent down the revelation. He doesn't have any of that firm belief. He's a clear apostate and clearly hiding as a closet atheist, pretending to still be a Muslim. Of course, we can go into things like where he denies verses of hudud in the Quran and he denies um, certain verses of the Quran, of course, you know, he'll always say there's a different interpretation. So, you know, it can get a bit tricky to convince other people that he's an apostate, but here is now clear evidence of his apostasy.